Ahoy hoy everyone, it's Craig back with another Disney Dining Review. Before I get started, I want to remind you this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content and you want to support us, please consider booking your next vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Remember, it costs you no extra money and you get the world-class support from a Dreams Unlimited Travel agent. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free, no obligation quote. Now, before I get started with this, you might be wondering, hey, why are you doing a Disney dining review from your house instead of in a theme park? And I'm not going to beat around the bush on this one. I had a lot of technical problems. Uh, this dining review, I'm heading to Epcot to try some of the new food and wine festival booths that just recently opened. And the problem was I chose like the worst time of day to go. <laughs> it's like right around that 3.30, 4 o'clock time period where it starts to be getting uh, to the hottest point of the day. And it was really sunny. So I the literally the brightness on my screen on my phone that I usually use to record dining reviews and such when I'm in the parks, I just couldn't see it at all. I was lost. So there was a couple points during the review that I was I, I just kept talking like the camera was actually recording when really it wasn't. So there are some gaps <laughs> along the way with this one that I'm going to fill in uh, from the luxury and comfort of my own home now. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's go to Epcot. Now today, I decided to come back to the surface of the sun, also known as Epcot, because a bunch of new food and wine festival booths opened up, but I have two on my mind today that I am anxious to try and they are right behind me. That's Lobster Landing and Mac and Eats. I need some lobster and I need some macaroni and cheese. I probably don't need either of them today or at this current time that I'm doing this because I am boiling. I think the feels like it's over 100 and that sun is brutal, but I'm gonna push through all that because I think there's gonna be some okay food ahead of me. Maybe even some good food, maybe even some great food. So I think I'm probably going to do lobster landing first and then mac and eats. So let's go take a look at the menu, see what's there, make some decisions and get to the food. Lobster landing has a couple different options. The New England lobster tail for $14, lobster chowder for $6.75 and baked lobster dip for $5.50. Uh, I've had to decide between the baked lobster dip and the New England lobster tail definitely too hot for chowder. I ultimately went with the lobster tail from Lobster Landing and it's $14. It is a big lobster tail and on top of it is lobster bisque and it's garnished on the side by a lemon. And I was listening to them talk inside Lobster Landing and they confirmed my thoughts. Basically, no one is going for the chowder right now. It's just too darn hot and a lot of people are getting the dip. So maybe I made a wrong move not getting the dip, but I don't know, something, something intrigued me about this. I needed to know, is this worth it for $14? So I'm gonna try to cut through a little bit here. I was hoping that just be like a big chunk of lobster coming right out, but okay, I'm starting to, okay. I got it going now. I also, Got it kind of on my hands. This is a nightmare. I'm like trying to pull it off right now. I also don't want to lose it. I'm getting there, okay. I don't think I'll be able to cut it now at this point. So I'm just gonna have to get really messy with how I eat this. So of course, with any review we do, it's also about the moment that we're having the food in that exact, exact reference in time of how the food is. And I think that's especially true with something like lobster. I got what I believe to be a delicious tail, but the next person behind me might get something that's a little bit uh, subpar compared to what I got. But, you know, a nice big hunk of meat on this thing, well worth the $14. The bisque that they put on top is creamy, just really adds that extra lobster flavor. You know, there's a nice buttery texture to it all. It's not overly chewy, it's just, it's just really nice lobster and I'm very happy with it, you know. Yeah, $14 on one little piece of tail. It's it's a stretch for a lot of people, but 
you know what? I'm happy, at least in this moment, that I tried it. Mac and Eats, okay. We have traditional macaroni and cheese for $4.75, truffle mac and cheese for $5.75, cowboy macaroni and cheese with smoked pork belly, brisket burnt ends, peppers, onion straws for $6.25, then uh, plant-based macaroni and cheese with house-made Italian sausage and peppers for $5.75. I think I know which one I want. I wish I had my in the moment review of what I got from Mac and Eats, but unfortunately, this is one of the pieces that was lost. So this is just going to have to do. And I said that it was pretty clear what I was going to get from Mac and Eats. And I'm sure it doesn't come as a surprise for me to say, hey, I got the cowboy macaroni and cheese. And this dish was six dollars and twenty five cents, and it came with smoked pork belly, brisket burnt ends, pickled peppers and onion straws. And I do talk about the macaroni and cheese in just a little bit in another piece of this review. So I'm going to focus right now solely on the toppings, which, again, to remind you, the meats were smoked pork belly and brisket burnt ends. I was I was really happy with the quality of the meat on top. They the pork belly did have a nice smoky flavor to it. It was it really balanced well with the the savory aspects of the macaroni and cheese and the and then the saltiness of the the brisket burnt ends as well too. It just it, it was a dish that overall had all those flavors, but I really loved the smokiness that was coming out of the the smoked pork belly. But the pork belly was like almost shredded at points. So that was kind of catching me off guard uh, to the point that I was like, OK, am I confusing what the pork belly is for the burnt ends and the burnt ends for the pork belly? And that shouldn't be the case because they're two very, very different types of barbecue. Uh, I mean, just brisket and pork. I mean, it, two different animals there. So uh, it was it was definitely kind of confusing me in the moment. But uh, then there was there was chunks that were like, this is clearly the burnt ends. I know this is. So that helped me to differentiate. And then again, the, the taste. Taste is different. But I thought really the two meats worked well together then with the macaroni and cheese base. I loved the crunchiness from the onion straws. There needed to be a lot more, though. That would have really helped the texture stand out uh, on this overall dish because, yeah, it's all all kind of mushy and chewy to a bit. So to have more crunchy onion straws on there, that would have been very nice. And pickled peppers, I could have used way more pickled peppers as well. But I love peppers. So, yeah, that's why I'm going to say I want more pickled peppers. I understand why they go a little bit easy on them, but I could have I could have taken so many more. These were these were so good and they added a nice extra spiciness to the dish. And then on top of the entire dish, there also was a spicy aioli that it wasn't descriptive on the menu and I didn't mention yet. But then that aioli on top, too, just really helped uh, balance out the flavors, add a little extra spice to it all. And again, a hefty dish packed with a lot of flavors. You can't really ask for much more. Before I finish the entire bowl, I want to take one bite of just the macaroni and cheese by itself. So that way I know how it is, you know, because as great as the toppings are on top, if the macaroni and cheese on the bottom isn't very good, then that's kind of a waste. You're putting good toppings on top of a subpar product. So let me get a bite here of just macaroni and cheese. Now, in my opinion, this is really good macaroni and cheese. Uh, it is very, very cheesy. It's not overly salty, but at the same time, there's like, there's no need for any other seasonings. The cheese is doing the hefty work there. It's a really nice macaroni and cheese if you were to get it by itself. I'm a big fan of that. I'm a really big fan of this dish. But I have one last thing to try too. I am just so hot and sweaty from this that I wanted to grab a beer. And this is an 81 Bay Lemon Hazy IPA that you can also get at Mac and Eats. And yeah, I've already had one sip. And there's another one. And this thing is so delicious. It has just a slight bitterness to it. Uh, for, you know, it's a, it's a IPA, even though it's a hazy one, it still does have that, that bitter aftertaste to it, especially uh, then with the, you know, the tanginess of the lemon that also has like a slight sour bitterness to it as well, too. I know I'm describing too many different things, but, uh, it, it's very nice. It's a perfect IPA for very hot weather. So I'm going to finish my beer. I'm going to finish my food. I'm going to hopefully find a place with air conditioning so I can cool down and then I'll 
I'll let you know my final thoughts. Okay, let's wrap up with this Epcot International Food and Wine Festival review of Lobster Landing and Mac and Eats. Where did I stand when this was all done? Well, I stood in the sun and I <laughs> I got even extra hot and I felt disgusting, but I left full. And that's exactly what I wanted. I only had two items there for my my late lunch and I left full and happy. And you know what? It was a little bit expensive considering the two items, you know, once you add them up together, that would have been $20 and 25 cents. Uh, it, $10 each item when you average it out, that's, that's a lot for food and wine. But you know what? That lobster tail was a nice one-off splurge for me. I'm never going to get it again. I can guarantee that. It was delicious. I'm glad I had it. I don't need it again. I can have lobster in a better setting if I really want it. Doesn't have to be at Epcot at all. Uh, but I am happy that I, I tried it in that moment. Uh, but for me, Mac and Eats is going to be the booth that I absolutely have to get back to. I really want to try the truffle macaroni and cheese. Even the uh, the the plant based one was a little bit intriguing to me as well too. I might I might be tempted into that one. And the macaroni and cheese by itself was so good that I'd also be willing to to give it a shot just on its own too. I really enjoyed the Mac and Eats booth. And again, that lemon hazy IPA that I had there. Oh, it just, it was the perfect beer for a hot day. I really have no complaints at all about anything that I had. And I am, I am so, so happy that these two booths opened up early. So we have more time with them during the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. And I can't wait to try some of the other booths that just recently opened and what in the the booths that are left to come. I think there's only a couple, but there's there's definitely I, I want to say like two or three more that are still to open up in the future. And I can't wait for it all. I'm really enjoying the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival this year. And I don't think I've made any like truly horrendous selections so far in any of my reviews. And that's a very good thing. But I hope you enjoyed this review. That's all I have to say about it right now. So let me now remind you that this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. So if you want to support us, get your free no obligation quote on your next vacation today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. If you enjoyed this review and you uh, want more of our great content, please, please, please make sure you are subscribed to Disney Dining on YouTube, that you're hitting the thumbs up on the videos and you're leaving comments, questions, and video suggestions in the comments section. And I promise I'm going to start getting to all of those uh, ideas that you have been leaving for me on new places to eat. I have a I have a long list adding up. It's got Blaze Pizza on it. It's got Cooks of Dublin. It has, uh, what else is on it? Uh, Raglan Road. That's been getting brought up a lot. So that's getting added to the to-do list. Columbia Harbor House, getting back over to Magic Kingdom for that. I have, I have a lot that keep Keep leaving me suggestions because I I never know where I'm going to end up. I never know where I'm going to have to be. So if I have options, I'm going to be able to get as much done as possible, hopefully with my stomach not expanding rapidly while it's all happening. But just keep leaving me those suggestions in the comments section. But that's going to do it for this dining, Disney dining review. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again next time with another one. Take care. Bye-bye.